good morning and welcome to this segment of the program. Inuagata no Sahai is my name and I am the business coach. So good to come your way this morning and add value to your day. Now, a team is not defined by a group of people putting on the same dressing code. What makes the Nigerian Navy a team is not the color of their uniform. What makes the Nigerian Air Force a team is not the color of their uniform. What makes the Federal Road Safety Commission a team is not the color of their uniform. A team is not defined by a group of people putting on the same dressing code. What makes my beloved FC Barcelona or Spain a team is not the color of their jerseys. A team is a group of individuals that have gathered to achieve the same goal. It's a collection of individuals that have gathered to achieve the same goal. And now, this goal that the team wants to achieve is always, always the preferring of solutions to problems. Teams exist to solve problems. The purpose of a team is to solve problems. Across board in every organization, the state governor and his cabinet of commissioners, they are there to solve problems. The president and his ministers are supposedly there to solve problems. Teams exist to solve problems. And one thing I want to drive home today is this, that should a team fail, the blame of that team failure will always be placed on the team leaders. When you are a team leader, if that team fails, let's say for example, you are the business manager or branch manager of a bank, you know, in any part of the country or in any part of the world where you are watching from, and that branch is not making profit. The bank, the, the, the bank uh, that particular bank is not making profit. The, the, the branch of that bank is not doing well. Now, when the top management are going to make decisions on who to fire first, they are not going to think about the security officer, neither the cleaner or even the, 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 the cash officer or the other uh, you know, operations or officers. They are going to think of you, first of all, the manager. Yes, when a team fails, the blame of that team failure will always be on the team leader across board in any organization. That is why it becomes very germane as a team leader that you must do everything possible to drive team culture. And one way you ensure that that is in place, team culture is in place to ensure the success of your team, is for you, the team leader, to be an example of a team player. As a team leader, you must model teamwork. If somebody walks into the office, walks into the uh, organization, and then they are looking for who is the best team player in that organization, in that office, all hands should point to you, the team leader, that you are the number one team player, you are the best team player. You must model what you want to see. What you want the people to exhibit to you, the attitude you want them to display and exhibit, you have to model that attitude before them. And now we are talking about teamwork attitude in order to ensure team culture. This is very important. You see, people are more moved by what you do than what you preach. People are more moved by your actions than your sermons. So you must do everything possible to see that you are the number one team player in the team. There should be no gap between your preaching of team culture or teamwork and you exhibiting teamwork. No, you shouldn't at all. You need to be the number one team player in order to drive team culture. And in that regard also, in order to ensure that there is, uh, you know, that your team achieves success, that uh, team you are leading, that department achieves success, Please, you must avoid playing favorites. If you want your team to fail today, start playing favorites. Start having favorite team member. Now, <clears throat> playing favorites involve you now having a particular team member in the team that every other team members now know that this is the person you love most. Ah, Nosa. Nosa is the person Madame love most. Ah, Johnson is the person Oga love most. Uh, Jacinta is the person Madame loves most. That is practically playing favorites. A situation where everybody in the team now knows that this is August's favorite child. This is the person Madame loves most. 
You see, it is very, very precarious because the other team members can start planning coup against this particular team member. And they can also start planning coup against the team leader. Now, there is something that you need to be very conscious of that makes team leaders who play favorite and now have a favorite team member or their most favorite team member. And that thing is a natural you know, phenomenon. And it's a situation whereby there is an exceptional player in the team. Whenever there is an exceptional performer in the team, there is a natural proclivity, the natural tendency that you, the team leader, will have this affinity, this attachment to this exceptional performer. When there never, whenever there is an exceptional player in the team, there is this natural tendency that you, the team leader, you will have this natural attachment to this exceptional performer. But you have to intentionally fight that natural tendency. Because at the end of the day, it will send a dangerous signal to the entire team, and it may boomerang negatively. So having an exceptional performer in the team is a very good thing. But you having an attachment to that exceptional performer becomes something very dangerous because that will demoralize the other team members. And let me say here, yeah, I always say this whenever I do trainings across board in various organizations, except especially on this issue of effective teamwork for peak performers. Now, you do not use an exceptional performer to demoralize the other team members. You use an exceptional performer to inspire the other team members. I remember speaking in a particular bank sometimes ago, and even in another second, private secondary school. And you know, the question that was asked during the Q and A session, the question answer session, you know, by both uh, the, the manager of that bank and also the, the school, the uh, school administrator, the head of that school, we are very similar. They said, when you have somebody that is doing so well, you have ten team members, and out of these ten team members, two of them are doing so well. You know, why not just keep attaching yourself to those two persons, two team members that are doing exceptionally well, in order for you to always get the results you want. And I said, that sounds very good, but wouldn't it be better if all your 10 team members are doing well, instead of just two of them doing well? Two team members are doing exceptionally well. You now have the responsibility to duplicate or replicate that same uh, uh, ex level of excellent performance in those two team members in the other in the remaining eight you know team members and if you are able to do this you will now discover that the output the result you will be getting will be so exponential to be so geometric this is very very important so part of your responsibility as a team leader is to also build the capacity of your team members if you have two persons in your team that are doing exceptionally well, you have that responsibility as a team leader to also make sure that the remaining eight team members, out of these 10 team members, also come to that level of performance with that other two that are doing so well. And at the end of the day, you will be the one smiling to the bank. All the, you know, the, 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 the appreciation, all the accolades are going to come to you, the team leader. You must do everything possible to see that you avoid playing favorites. And I've told you that the thing that the factor that leads to you know the possibility of you playing favorite in the team is when you have an exceptional team member, an exceptional performer in the team. And there is that natural tendency that you have this attachment towards this exceptional performer, but you need to consciously and intentionally fight this natural tendency. You know, this also happens in homes. You see a situation whereby in the family, because there is this child that is so good with mathematics or generally academically, this child is a star. The parents now have this, you know, unconscious attachment and affinity towards this child. And this kind of attitude can demoralize the other team members. I remember a particular time I was addressing the Federal Safety Commission Zone 5, and I was speaking along this line. and. You know, I cited these examples, and when it also got to the Q&A session, one of the officers said that he actually was guilty of that kind of being attached to an exceptional performer, that he has a daughter who, academically, the daughter is a star. And whenever the children are coming back home after terminal exams, bringing results home, he always wants to see the daughter's results first because she will always deliver because she's an exceptional performer academically. 
And one day, they were also coming home after an exam, bringing results home. All the children were bringing, yeah, my result, daddy, my result, my result. He said, unconsciously, it was just focused on that daughter that is the exceptional performer. And the last child of the house that we called the baby of the house also wanted the daddy to see the results. But the father did not notice her because of the exceptional performer. And that, la that baby of the house now went to the mom and said, mommy, can you see? Because of Josephine, nobody is looking at my results. And when the father got to know of that, that made him feel so bad. And if that remains in a family like that, you are already separating the children. You are already telling this one, you are the one I love most. You are that dude, you know, I really, I, let's just move along. You know, after all, you are my child, you are all my children, and all that. That is not good for the advancement of the family team. A team leader must avoid playing favorite. And also as a team leader, don't display a disposition or an attitude that makes your team members look unintelligent. You know, when you are holding team meetings and then you are soliciting for suggestions and opinions from team members, please, no matter how stupid the idea may sound or look, don't show it in any way. When the, when the team member makes that suggestion, say, oh, thank you very much, I will take note of it, write it down, collect all the other suggestions and opinions, don't ever in any way make the team member feel that the idea is so dumb or the idea is so stupid. Don't do that. When you do that, you know, you will be short-circuiting more ideas from coming out of this team member. Now, tomorrow, this team member may just have an amazing idea that can turn the team around, turn the organization around, take the team to the next level. But because the, of the uh, kind of attitude you have displayed towards him before that, oh, you are not intelligent, uh, you, know, you, 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 you know, your suggestions are not always uh, on point, the, the team member will just keep that idea to himself because you have made him to lose confidence in himself. He don't know, his self-esteem has been damaged. And at the end of the day, who is losing? The team leader. You, the team leader, is the one that is losing. Uh, I strongly believe that lots of value have been added to your day, premium value for that matter. And I believe that you will want to reach me. My phone numbers have been right there on the screen. The MTN is 080-6686-5060. I take it again, 080-6686-5060. The glow line is equally there. It's 080-529, two nine again, one two zero. 080-529, two nine again, one two zero. It's very important that you reach me so that we can have a team building training session for your organization, for your people, for your church members or church workers. And then let's take things to the next level for you. Very, very important. I'll be continuing from this point next week. And when I return, I will still remain the amiable Inuarata no Sahai. Your day is so blessed. Thank you.